Hello and welcome to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel. And in today's episode, we're going to look at the 1979 Aussie Ford Fairlane. Hello and welcome back. Now if you're new to Quartzlight, we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube, looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond that as well so if you're interested in cars car brochures looking back on cars gone by all about memories please consider subscribing it is all completely free anyway back to today's episode we've been continuing looking at this 1979 ford all model range catalogue for australia we're kind of like up to the top model now so we'll certainly throw that on the board now this comes on a Friday, we call those episodes Ford Friday episodes, we look at a Ford every Friday, it just happens we now we're up to this particularly Australian brochure, but we talk about Fords from around the world. Anyway, let's throw that brochure on the board and let's talk about a little bit about this interesting model. So here is the brochure that we've been looking at, Ford Cars, Ford Cars Catalogue, August 1979. Ford Sales Company of Australia Limited, yeah. The Australian all model range for Ford for August 79. Now I've been looking through the full range of these cars and if you missed any of the episodes, I'll put a link at the end where all the cars will eventually be in one place in that category for Ford Cars uh, August 79 Australia. Now, the model we're now up to is the Ford Fairlane, the Aussie Fairlane. Tells at the top there, a distinctive difference in prestige motoring. This one actually at the time was your top model um, at the time, this particular model. Last week we'll look at the Falcons and the Fairmonts. Now the Fairlane. And this was actually a new model for this time period actually. Um, it ran from 1979 to 1982. I think these were known as the, the Fairlane ZJ. I'm not an Aussie car expert, so please do comment any more information that you can put in there. I always le love learning about these cars, even though I've never actually been on, in one of these or even seen one in real life. But I'm becoming more and more interested in these Aussie cars. They are interested and they have very interesting uh, specifications. Now the thing about this fur lane is very different to the fur lane that we looked at in our last Aussie brochure. Not long previous, this is a November 78 brochure, where the fur lane looked like this. The problem is I kind of like fell in love with this uh, fur lane in 78 actually. Um, this is a much more squared off, more of an 80s look isn't it, from what is very much a 70s look. Um, the model I really liked was this wonderful base model Fairlane, the Fairlane 500. I loved it in black with this vinyl roof. It's possibly one of my favourite cars in this 78 brochure, although there are some wonderful models in here. I just overall really like the look. It certainly, I mean, I don't mind this look. It almost looks a little bit Merc-like, actually, doesn't it? Um, but to me, I don't know. I like this. I love this. And I've never driven either, so please do comment in the comments which was overall a better vehicle. But looks-wise, I really like these 500s. And they did do... Um, more luxury orientated models like the marquee but actually strangely as we went up i kind of didn't like them as much i just looked like that very basic 500 really you could even at this time get the ford ltd with what i would describe as challenging looks i never like to put a car down really because there's people who love every make and model of car that there's ever been built there's always going to be enthusiasts so i don't like to put cars down and after all it's purely all about taste really isn't it you could even get the weird and wonderful apologize for flicking the pages in front of you the weird and wonderful silver bonnet edition 
I can say, a unique look. And I'm sure there's people that actually love the look of these. But for me, the more basic Furlane 500 for 78 was really my pick and the one I would have chosen, obviously. Everyone's got their own idea of what they like. So, moving on, of course, as we kind of like have to move on, we're told we must move on. Do I struggle with it a bit? This is the new model, the Ford Fairlane. This is the new Prestige model. Unusually, though, for 1979 or this particular August 79 brochure, there's only one model because I guess it's just been introduced. They've only got one line. So essentially, there's one Fairlane and it's the top of the range model. The LTD wasn't around yet, October 79, so not far off. You know, we've only got a month to wait. You could then get the LTD as well. If we just zoom in there. So there we go, we zoom in on the front. And like I say, this particular variation of the fur lane is giving me almost like Germanic looks. It almost looks a bit Mercedes-esque um, from the front end, from the 80s Mercedes. But I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but... Certainly that's our new model, a much more squared off, more 80s look as the fashions change and of course as we start thinking more about fuel economy and being able to drive around corners etc. So let's open the first page. Then we get two shots of the sides, big pictures unfortunately it's in the crease there but that can't be helped so we get a look at the side front view and the side rear view. Now we kind of like lose that Mercedes S quality um, when we did when we looked at the front from the front and then we get more of a Ford sort of design ethic there overall. Um, we'll read some of this text then we may zoom in at some of these key points of this particular version. So it tells us Ford Fairlane as you would expect a car that looks as impressive as this has performance to match with decreased body weight, better aerodynamic styling and improved engine characteristics, Furlane is designed for better performance. Standard 4.9 litre V8 engine with four barrel carburetor makes Furlane equally at home across town or on the open road, with real power for the long haul or for towing. If it's more performance you're after, a 5.8 litre V8 engine is available at extra cost. Furlane's wide track, long wheelbase, shorter body and revised suspension are all designed with one aim, to provide you with a well-balanced combination of control and comfort. The suspension is finely tuned to high quality steel belt radial tyres and the four wheel powered disc brakes now have a larger booster. To further assist your travelling comfort, Furlane has integrated air conditioning with duct into the front and rear compartment, tinted band, laminated windscreen and tinted side and rear windows. Airflow has been increased by approximately 25% over the previous model. Through the use of more efficient ventilation system and improved extraction vents, there's a high law setting too, which allows you to have cool air on your face and warm air on your feet, helping you keep you warm but alert on long trips. Twin quartz halogen headlights pierce the darkness more effectively. Extensive use has been made of sound absorbing insulation materials, helping to provide a quieter, more relaxed driving environment. Taking these and the many other improvements into account, Fairlane is bound to be regarded as a car for the big country. So all these big pictures now. So there's a side shot, a huge Fairlane um, badge down the side. I don't know, it almost looks too big really. Unusual wheel trims on there. And then the rear looks like quite a sizable boot space actually. And then talking about boot space, another angle looking at that, we can see how this is badged. Ford 
fair laid, unusual uh, lights with these sort of segments. They do look particularly unusual, although I think I quite like them. Overall, lots of sort of bright work around the windows, around the wheel arches. Overall, I think I prefer the darker colours actually for the fair lady in many different generations really. I think it suits it more, that sort of prestige look. But I guess on the other hand, a dark colour isn't really ideal for the Australian climate. Although it sounds like you've got a pretty good air conditioning system in there. Now because this is a new model and I guess this is probably at the time you're imagining you're an Australian, this is fresh eyes on this new shape, you're considering trading in your 78 Fairlane 500, please don't, please don't, um, but it kind of like shows you some of the advantages, obviously we're not going to read all this but it's got little unusual little key features, this unusual little eye view where it's kind of like trying to show you um, you know, your, your new Fairlane has got slightly increased view from the previous model. A strange sort of graphic to show you, really. Um, starts talking about, you know, better streamlining. You know, it's going to make it quicker, more economical. And it starts talking about other advantages, you know, a reduced turning circle, easier to service, etc, etc. Now, because there's just one model at this sort of launch type brochure, I guess we could call it like the launch. We get lots of images for this one model, of course. We get really nice interior um, pictures, which actually, it does look very nice on the inside, actually. It also tells us some of the features we get, so we'll certainly have a look at those first. Then we'll come back to the pictures. So, it starts telling us the standard features then. And I apologise, it does fall on the crease there, but it says we get a 4.9 litre V8 with four barrel carburetor, although we can get a larger engine if we wish. Three speed T bar automatic transmission, electronic ignition, ER70 H14 steel belt radial ply tyres, four wheel power disc brakes, limited slip differential, twin quartz halogen headlights, power steering, soft feel twin spoke steering wheel, instrumentation includes voltmeter, oil pressure, temperature and fuel gauges, AM push button radio with power, power aerial, digital clock with date and month display on demand, left and right hand side remote control, exterior rear view mirror, integrated aircon, with duct in to rear compartments, tinted side and rear glass, tinted band laminated windscreen, intermittent wipers, outboard inertia reel seat belts front and rear, hazard flashers, outboard passenger grab handles. So certainly on paper, everything is an improvement of the old model. It's just for me, I prefer the looks of the old older model. But like I say, if you're test driven or indeed owned, both these two vehicles please do comment and tell me how they're different and was one better than the other at the end of the day because in theory this is obviously a far better car and they're trying to sell it as you know we've got all the improvements inside trying to zoom in a bit further to show you the instrumentation so it's up the auto transmission and then this unusual little bank of switches there unusually placed seats look very nice very comfortable Nice head restraints, nice sort of door card, this very much traditional uh, Ford or Aussie Ford at least door handle on integrated armrest I guess. Then the look at the front steering wheel, nothing particularly special about that. What I do find a little bit unusual, maybe I should zoom in a bit further. Doesn't appear to be a rev counter on there which is a little bit unusual for what they claim to be a prestige vehicle. There is our climate control system. And then sort of like an integrated, um, pretty basic looking um, radio though. There with, looks like an electric aerial switch. A little bit of a look at the mirror design. Grab handles of course. Uh, another look at those bank of switches there. And a little bit of a digital clock. Rear vents, which is always nice to see, and a lot of modern cars don't even have that. And then what looks like a very sort of roomy rear seat there. It looks like there's lots of leg room, 
really deep pile carpeting in there which certainly adds to that prestige of the vehicle seats look very nice look like very nice material they've not gone for the leather but i think i prefer that particularly in a, hot, a hotter country and then we've got a really nice looking comfortable um, center armrest there too and then that takes us to the ford fairlane options and specifications it doesn't look like there's that much information so let's have a look at that too so we started talking about convenience and appearance equipment so you can get an optional am push button radio stereo cassette tape player you can get a optional am fm push button multiplex radio stereo cassette tape player um, you get vinyl seat covering if you want no cost option i'm not entirely sure who would actually choose that we get a leather seat covering as an option we get a vinyl roof there as an option as well, which I quite like the vinyl roof, I don't know. And metallic paint is rather nicely a no cost option. And we can even have those rather nice Volante Sports Road wheels. Just a quick reminder what they look like. It goes on to tell us power equipment, so power operated windows was an option. Then we get the heavy duty equipment, so heavy duty suspension, out backpack, class 1 towing pack, heavy duty pack for towing, and a class 2 towing pack, all options. I imagine there would be pretty good tow vehicles actually. So standard is your 4.9 litre 4 barrel V8. Um, you can have an optional 3 speed automatic column shift. 3 speed T-Boy Auto was your standard kit though. You can also option it to have the 5.8 litre four barrel V8 um, with the three speed auto column shift optional, three speed T-bar auto optional uh, tyres. Looks like we just got a standard one set of tyres there. Gives you the dimensions and then gives you the engine specifications. So the 4.9 litre four barrel V8 was apparently a, exactly 4900 cc and the 5.8 litre four barrel v8 was apparently exactly 5800 cc and then we get a little bit of a drawing of the fair lane next week we're going to be looking at the ford recreational and light commercial vehicles for 79 in australia lovely drawings i love that drawing you can almost stick that on your wall isn't it amazing drawing so that's going to be an interesting one i do like some of those recreational uh, vehicles that australia were selling in the 70s so i guess the only question really is what do you do you're shopping for your car in 79 this new fancy new model has just come out the new fair lane or do you get the old model? I'm sure when this came out, there's some brand new ones that were still in the showroom. Probably discounted now the new models come out. Looks wise, I would definitely go for this. I do look love the overall look, but but I'm sure these were good cars as well. Certainly just in the notes, your opinions of these cars, particularly if you owned these two models which one you preferred that would be certainly interesting to know but thank you so much for watching today i do appreciate it as always like i said next week we'll look at the vans and pickups for australia in 79 and there's some real colorful little numbers in there i really like them but we'll say as we always do please do consider subscribing it is all completely free helps you find these episodes easier helps us get better content and approve, improve as our audience grows as it is it's nicely growing you can actually become a member as well if you want for a very low fee but that's completely optional i'm not offering much for members really i mean that's just a way to support the channel and increase the channel i appreciate those people who are members as we get more members though i'll probably have to start doing member only little episodes but for now the numbers are so low that really i don't really have the time to uh, cater for that very low numbers with extra episodes but i do appreciate it and uh, you know everyone who is a member they're guaranteed a comment every time they comment to me but thank you so much for watching today like i said i do appreciate it many more episodes to come in the near future if this is friday when you're watching this then do have a good weekend or I hope you're enjoying your weekend or if 
somebody's watching this two years down the line i hope your day is going well but thank you so much for watching today please do take care we'll see you very soon and goodbye <laughs>